all feasts of the saints, but especially on this feast of all of the saints together, it should be part of our devotion to praise and thank God for the infinite goodness that he has displayed in his elect, for the people who served him and loved him, and who saved their souls. One of the most important and primary forms of homage we owe to God is to praise him and love him and think about his perfection and goodness with wonder and love. This is why the Psalms are primarily and usually prayers of adoration to God for his goodness. And the Psalms are considered some of the most important prayers that we have. They are, of course, inspired by the Holy Ghost, a part of the Bible. And they form really the basis of the entire liturgy. The church prays using the Psalms and quoting from them more than from any other set of prayers. If we think about what the blessed are doing in heaven right now, whom we are venerating today, we see that they are doing exactly the same thing. They are continuously praising God with uninterrupted music and celebration and adoration. As they gaze eternally on the beatific vision and see God's glory directly. All they can do is praise him as the vision fills them with joy and wonder for all eternity. Every moment they see God, they see more of his glory and are filled even more with awe and wonder. And they express their praise more and more. And here on earth, so many people have renounced all of the the things of this world, all of its goods and occupations and pleasures, to devote themselves completely to the praise and love and contemplation of God, and to pray with humility in reparation for sin and for the conversion of sinners. This is where God's servants find their spiritual strength. This is how they increase in love and holiness. And even good Catholics who live in the world and have a secular vocation are not able to be continually praising God in this manner, but they do it to the extent of their abilities, good Catholics do. And throughout the day, they constantly have the intention of offering all of their works during the day, the duties of their state in life, for the honor and glory of God. Because of that, they, of course, perform all of their duties as well as they can to give God as much honor as possible by doing so. Today, the church in the epistle that we read, which is taken from the apocalypse, gives us an image of the saints in heaven. It shows us what they are constantly doing for God. And we see that St. John sees them singing a hymn of praise and thanksgiving to the Lamb, which symbolizes our Lord. They see God's majesty and justice, his sanctity and his power and glory, and they rejoice in his perfections. They are so enthusiastic that it says they are standing because they can't sit in the sight of this, this great vision. But at the same time, they see that all of their praise is infinitely inadequate to the greatness of God. And their understanding of him also falls infinitely short of reality. We here on earth fall even further short in offering a suitable praise to God because we don't have the the perfection that the souls in heaven have nor do we see the unveiled vision of God the way they do. And so we support our own weakness and insufficiency by offering the holy sacrifice of the Mass in praise of God. That is why we have come here today to attend (coughs) Holy Mass. The Mass is the sacrifice of the Lamb of God that is mentioned in the Apocalypse which God gave to his church. He gave it to us. He gave us this infinitely worthy offering 
that we could offer to him so that we would be able to offer to God, in spite of our own weakness, a praise and honor that would be truly worthy of him and that he would accept, not out of his mercy, but because it truly is worthy of himself. In fact, the church offers this infinitely worthy homage to God, not just today, but every single day of the year, except Good Friday, of course, just as the saints in heaven praise God continuously every single day. And we, in a sense, are more blessed than they because they are no longer able to attend the holy sacrifice of the Mass the way we are. Now, theologians distinguish two kinds of glory that God has. His internal glory and his external glory. God's internal glory is the glory that he has from his own being. It's the glory he has in himself, his inherent greatness and perfection. Of course, this is infinite, and it cannot be increased or diminished by any of his creatures. But there is also his external glory, which is the honor that is given to him by his creatures. It comes to God from a source outside of himself, from us here, for example, praying and adoring him. And God deserves all possible glory from his creatures by absolute right and out of pure justice. We owe God all of the honor that we are able to give him. The same is true for all the other creatures that he created. And this is why sinners are deserving of such great punishment. Because not only do they not give to God the glory they are required to, to give him by their, their homage and obedience to his commandments, but in fact they insult God and damage God's external glory by their sins. They offend God. But we as his creatures owe him homage, not only for his own in, uh, in, internal, inherent greatness and glory, but also because of the goodness that he has shown in creation, and particularly in the goodness and mercy that he has shown to us, in all the graces that he has given us, for redeeming us from our sins, by making us members of his church, and forgiving us our sins and the, the countless innumerable other benefits he has given us throughout our entire lives. We owe God praise and thanksgiving for all of these things. And we read in the Psalms, as I said, that, that King David mentions graces like this constantly in the Psalms. He is constantly thanking God for all the mercy God has shown him. And, and he calls on all of creation to join with him in, in giving God thanks and praise. That is a very, very holy sentiment, one that we need very much for our spiritual life. The saints are the highest of all of God's creatures. God created, of course, the physical world for the purpose of mankind to live in. And man is the highest creature in the physical world. And of course, the angels are, are higher than man, but just speaking about the, the physical world. So among mankind, the ones who serve God and fulfill God's will and give God the honor that he intended us to give him are, of course, the, the highest human beings, the, the most, most precious in the sight of God. So that means we have to examine our own consciences today to see if we are fulfilling the purpose of our creation, to see if we are giving God the honor we owe him as his creatures. Are we giving God the honor he intended to receive from us and for which purpose he created us in the first place? That is the only reason we're here is to glorify God. Do we struggle against our passions and do we seek to avoid sin and mortify our evil inclinations to protect us from falling? Or do we just go along with the evil of this world 
and give in to our desires, even at the cost of offending God. All Saints Day is very much a day that is intended for all Catholics, not just for one particular great saint, like throughout most of the rest of the year. All Saints Day is for all the regular people like us, the millions and millions of Catholics who have lived before us in so many centuries past, and also the good believers in God of the Old Testament too, who saved their souls. It's a time for us to think about if we are in that number or not. Are we living now in such a way that we will end up in that vast multitude that St. John was privileged to see that we hear about today? Or are we living like the wicked that St. John saw in another part of the apocalypse? He saw them cast into what he said was a pool of fire and brimstone, and he said they would be tormented day and night forever and ever. He said that is the second death. There is nothing in this world that could ever be worth a fate like that. So let us ask God's grace to overcome our temptations and serve him so that one day we will also be remembered on this Feast of All Saints by future generations of Catholics. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.